Okay, so it's no longer news that Microsoft finally closed the back door through which the free upgrade from Windows 7 or 8 to Windows 10 and 11 was possible. An official statement to this effect was posted on the Microsoft Device Partner Center communications portal on September 20th, where Microsoft reminded the public that the Microsoft free upgrade offer for Windows 10 and 11 ended since July 2016, which was seven years ago. They further informed that the free upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 is still ongoing. In the same short statement, Microsoft reaffirmed its stance on the need for devices upgrading to Windows 11 to meet the minimum system's requirements, as described on this page. Now, this was certainly a sudden move by Microsoft, and I can hardly imagine that a lot of people saw it coming. The statement is quite concise and almost requires no explanation. However, there are certain nuances about these changes that the statement has left out and that we need to be aware of. First, this doesn't mean that you can no longer perform a direct upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10 as it had always been in the past. You can still do that exactly the same way. It simply means that a free provisional license that was previously assigned to your Windows 10 or 11 after such upgrade from Windows 7 or 8 would no longer be provided. Now, this is important because for some users, the idea of upgrading from Windows 7 to Windows 10 in this manner is not all about the license. Some users want to seamlessly retain all their files, folders, applications, settings, and various credentials. For such users, all they need after the regular upgrade from Windows 7 or 8 to Windows 10 would be to obtain a license key from a reliable retailer like Prime Tech Mart to activate their Windows. I will leave their link down in the video description. Now, once you have an activated Windows 10, then you can perform a free upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And now the question on why Microsoft decided to make these changes. There are several theories out there, so it's hard to say specifically why they did. Personally, I think the free Windows 7, 8 to Windows 10 upgrade was going to continue indefinitely considering how long it was left to continue after it was supposed to end. But then when Windows 11 came and this free upgrade also extended to Windows 11, I felt there was going to be a major change to the overall scheme sometime soon. Now, not just were you able to upgrade from Windows 7 all the way to Windows 11, it was also possible to reuse the old licenses from your 14-year-old Windows 7 PCs to activate a freshly installed Windows 11 which was quite strange. Now, saying that, I thought it's either Microsoft is on a long walk to making Windows completely free, or they are holding their breath as long as possible before they finally end the party, which is what we saw recently, by the way. Some have also said that this is Microsoft's approach to getting more people to upgrade to modern PCs so they can have more adopters for their new and upcoming innovations in Windows. Others have also alluded that this is to protect the interests of Microsoft's OEM partners who purchase OEM licenses for their new PCs. Now, irrespective of what theory you choose to believe, the fact is that Microsoft now wants you to purchase a license to activate your Windows 10 after upgrading from Windows 7 or 8. So with less than 30 bucks, you can purchase such license key and with that, you are good to go. I have tested different scenarios myself to see how practically these changes affect the upgrade process. First, I tried activating freshly installed Windows 10 and 11 using an old Windows 7 keys as before, and they didn't work. So yes, the reuse of such keys to activate freshly installed Windows 10 and 11 seems to be over. Second, I tried a traditional free upgrade approach where you first install a Windows 7 and activate it using a Windows 7 key, then afterwards upgrade to Windows 10, and for that, the process was still successful. The upgrade happened and Windows 10 inherited the activation from Windows 7. Now, it could be that Microsoft is rolling out these changes in phases, but as of today, I was still able to upgrade from a Windows 7 to a Windows 10 without losing the activation. The second part of that announcement that has equally raised concerns for users was Microsoft reaffirming its stance on the need for devices upgrading to Windows 11 to meet the minimum system's requirements as described on this page. Right now, there are several backdoors through which you can still install Windows 11 on unsupported PCs. I have covered some of them on this channel. However, if Microsoft decided to enforce these requirements, then the push towards newer PCs will become even more severe. Because with the end of support for Windows 10 a mere two years away and PC sales on decline, 
a vast majority of users will likely still have PCs that don't meet these Windows 11 requirements. So either such users will have to keep running a Windows 10 with no support from Microsoft or forced to invest in a newer PC. We just have to wait and see how this all plays out. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about all these changes. Is Microsoft hurting its user base or pushing the world towards innovation? Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.